Welcome back friends. Good morning all of you. So today we are going to discuss about the connections of thalamus. In our previous class we have discussed about the thalamus, what is the location of the thalamus and what are the different nuclei of the thalamus. And today we are going to discuss about the connections of the thalamus. So thalamus which is located just below the columns of the fornix and as well as the corpus callosum and we can call it as it is a part of the diencephalon. So we are going to take off this small part and we are going to see different nuclei. In that first we are going to see the intramedullary laminae. Yeah, here in this picture we can identify this Y-shaped band which is called as intramedullary laminae. So the divergence of the inter intramedullary laminae anterior to this divergence we can identify the nucleus is present called as anterior nucleus. So this anterior nucleus, again it is going to divide into three parts, anterior ventral, anterior dorsal and anterior medial. So this dark color one, the brown color one is called as anterior ventral group and this blue color one is called as anterior dorsal and this yellow color one is anterior medial. So it establishes the reciprocal connections with the mammillary body. Let us see that. So here you can identify the connections. So the anterior ventral which is connecting with the mammillary bodies. Then anterior ventral it is also connecting with the habenular nucleus. Habenular nucleus. And also it receives a few, a few fibers from the columns of the fornix as well. We can identify here, we can identify the columns of the fornix. So the connections of the anterior ventral nucleus is with the mammillary body, with the anterior columns of the fornix columns of the phonics and as well as it is connecting with the habenular nucleus. So uh, when it is connecting with the habenular nucleus, it is passing through the stria medullaris thalami. Stria medullaris thalami. Then coming to the efferent fibers. Efferent fibers. Let us see the efferent fibers. So the anterior medial which is passing through the anterior limb of internal capsule and it is connecting with the cingulate gyrus. It is connecting with the cingulate gyrus. So that is about the anterior ventral nucleus. The function is papus circuit of limbic system. Lesion in the anterior group may produce Corsacap syndrome with loss of recent memory. Then coming to the dorsomedial group. Dorsomedial group. So here we can identify medial to this intramedullary laminae. We can identify two different areas called as they will come through the dorsomedial group. And this dorsal medial group, which is going to divide into magnocellular and the parvocellular. Magnocellular and the parvocellular. So the magnocellular part, which is connecting with the, let us see that magnocellular part, which is connecting uh, to the amygdaloid body. Amygdaloid body. And it is also connecting with the lateral hypothalamus. It is connecting with the lateral hypothalamus. You can identify over here. And it is connecting with the temporal neocortex. Temporal neocortex. And also it is connecting with the caudal orbitofrontal cortex. Caudal orbitofrontal. So here it is, we can identify the temporal neocortex, and here we can identify the orbitofrontal cortex. So these are the four connections of magnocellular part of the dorsomedial medial group. <clears throat> then coming to the parvocellular part, parvocellular part, which is connecting, it is provides the profuse reciprocal connections with the area number six that is in the prefrontal cortex prefrontal cortex including area number nine you can see over here nine uh, 10 11 and as well as the 12. okay so that is about the parvocellular part of the dorsomedial group what about the function the function is Dorsomedial medial nucleus acts as integrating center for somatic and visceral impulses. Through its connections with the prefrontal cortex, it provides mood or feeling tone to the emotional aspect of behavior. Then coming to the midline nucleus. Midline nucleus. So what about this midline nucleus? So the midline nucleus, it is also connecting. So the dorsal medial group, it is also connecting. Dorsal medial group, it is also connecting with the midline nucleus and the intralaminar nucleus intralaminar nucleus so 
intralaminar nucleus which is present in the intramedullary laminae. So from the intramedullary laminae, one connection is connecting with that, and then midline nucleus, another connecting, another connection is uh, connecting with the magnocellular part of the dorsomedial group. Another connection is it is connecting with some of the lateral thalamic nucleus, lateral thalamic nucleus. So that is about the connections of the dorsomedial group. The function is function already have discussed about it. So the connection is uh, it connects with the prefrontal cortex, so it provides mood or feeling tone to the emotional aspect of behavior. Then coming to the ventral anterior nucleus. Ventral anterior nucleus, ventral anterior nucleus, it is also like it is also having three different parts: magnocellular, parvocellular. Okay, magnocellular and the parvocellular part. So the magnocellular part of the ventral anterior nucleus receives the fibers from the pars reticularis. So this part we are going to see now. So the ventral anterior nucleus, ventral anterior, and this is ventral lateral. And this is ventral posterior. So this part we are going to see now. So the ventral anterior group it is having magnocellular and the parvocellular. Magnocellular part it receives fibers from the pars reticularis, pars reticularis, and the uh, pars reticularis of substantia nigra. So here you can identify how it is connecting with the substantia nigra. So the pars reticularis of the substantia nigra connecting to the magnocellular part of ventral anterior nucleus. Then parvocellular part, parvocellular part which is connecting with the globus pallidus of basal ganglia. Globus pallidus of the basal ganglia. Okay, so globus pallidus it is a part of the lentiform nucleus. That is a medial part of the lentiform nucleus. We can call it as a globus pallidus. So the globus pallidus is connecting with the parvocellular part of ventral anterior nucleus. So the ventral anterior nucleus also receives fibers from intralaminar. So intralaminar nucleus and the midline nucleus, the brain from brainstem reticular formation and corticofugal fibers. If you have few fibers of the corticofugal, they are connecting with the parvocellular part. So that is about the connections of ventral anterior nucleus. Then coming to the efferents or output, output of this ventral anterior nucleus, fibers from the parvocellular part are projected primarily to the premotor cortex, premotor cortex, that is area number six, which includes the supplementary motor area on the medial surface of cerebral hemisphere, immediately rostral to the area number four. Then fibers from the magnocellular part magnocellular part is connecting with the orbitofrontal cortex orbitofrontal cortex so magnocellular is connecting with the orbitofrontal cortex parvocellular part which is connecting to the area number six which is rostral to the area number four the function is ventral anterior nucleus along with the ventral lateral nuclei of thalamus conveys information to the motor areas of the frontal lobe from corpus striatum Corpus striatum already have discussed about the corpus striatum in the basal ganglia. So that is the head of the caudate nucleus is connecting with the lentiform nucleus, that is the putamen of the lentiform nucleus, that is called as corpus striatum and substantia nigra. It is also one of the basal ganglia part. In degenerative lesions, the basal ganglia, the thalamic nuclei, discharge abnormally and give rise to dyskinesia. Then coming to the ventral lateral nucleus. Ventral lateral nucleus it is having different parts. One is oral part, oral part, then the caudal part, oral part, caudal part. Let us see one by one. So this is the ventral lateral nucleus. Ventral lateral nucleus it is having the connections. One is oral part, it receives major input from the dentate nucleus of contralateral cerebellar hemisphere and from the ipsilateral red nucleus let us see that so here you can identify the dentate nucleus which we can identify in the cerebellum from the dentate nucleus the oral part of the ventral lateral nucleus is connecting okay dentate nucleus another part is from the this is this is ipsilateral part 
okay sorry this is controlled part oral part is controlled part of the dentate nucleus whereas the whereas the red nucleus is ipsilateral so the ipsilateral part of the red nucleus is connecting with the oral part of the ventral lateral nucleus okay so remember two connections one is from the contralateral dentate nucleus ipsilateral red nucleus then the medial part medial part medial part is connecting with the globus pallidus medial part is connecting with the globus pallidus then another connection is from the substantia nigra substantia nigra it is connecting with the medial part of the ventral lateral nucleus then the oral part it is also having it is also connecting with the area number 6 area number six, sorry area number 4 it is exactly present in front of the central sulcus so both oral and the caudal part of the ventral lateral establish reciprocal and the somatotopical connections with the precentral gyrus precentral gyrus that is area number 4 medial part of the ventral nucleus is connected with the face area so here you can see that so the face area medial part is connecting with the face area and the lateral part is connected with the uh, leg area and then another connection lateral part is connecting with the shoulder trunk shoulder and trunk and then coming to the functions what about the function the ventral lateral nucleus conveys impulses from the cerebellum and basal ganglia to motor cortex and exists, exerts its role as prime mover of the motor pathway so surgical ablation of the ventral lateral along with ventral anterior may abolish the tremor and rigidity of parkinson's disease yes the rest of the nucleus that is ventral posterior nucleus medial geniculate bodies lateral geniculate bodies and as well as the lateral dorsal nucleus lateral posterior nucleus and the pulvinar part of the thalamus, intralaminal nucleus, these are all the topics we are going to discuss in the next class. So, till then, please uh, revise once again, revise once again, try to draw the diagrams on a piece of paper, on a white paper. Till that time, see you soon, guys. See you. So, thalamus, which is located just below the columns of the fornix and as well as the carpus callosum, and we can call it as it is a part of the diencephalon.